Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to episode 110 of the Xbox and 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are in an Xbox-related fun fact together. The show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe to your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles that you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big games out last week were Space Jam A New Legacy of the Game and Operation Tango. The games coming out this week include Watch Dogs Legion Bloodline, Monster Harvest, Heart of the Woods, Indigo 7 Quest for Love, Crash Drive 3, Police Stories, Blue Fire, Beasts of Marvel Island, Mythic Ocean, and Imagine Earth. New games with gold for July 2021 have been announced, and they include the following. Planet Alpha from Xbox One available July 1st to the 31st. Rock of Age 3 Make and Break available from July 16th to August 15th from Xbox One. The original Xbox game Conquer Live and Reloaded available from July 1st to the 15th. And the 360 game Midway Arcade Origins available from July 16th to the 31st. Now onto last week's biggest news stories, and we have six to cover this week. Number one, Xbox Cloud Gaming, now running on Xbox Series X, expanded PC and Apple device availability. Catherine Gluckstein, Vice President and Head of Product Xbox Cloud Gaming, writes on Xbox Wire. At Xbox, our mission is simple, bring the joy and community of gaming to everyone on the planet. To achieve that, we aspire to empower everyone to play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. We are creating a future that combines the gaming heritage of Xbox and the power of Azure. A future where we bring high fidelity, immersive games to the 3 billion players around the world. Now we're taking a big step forward toward reaching that vision. Starting today, Xbox Cloud Gaming is available to all Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members with Windows 10 PCs and Apple phones and tablets via browser across 22 countries. If you're a member or want to become a member, simply go to xbox.com play on Microsoft Edge, Chrome, or Safari on your PC or mobile device to start playing hundreds of games from the Xbox Game Pass library. With billions of active Windows 10 PCs, iOS devices, and Android phones, we want you to have new opportunities to play the deepest, most immersive games whenever and wherever you choose. Simply put, we're bringing the Xbox experience directly to the devices you use most. We're also making significant improvements to the overall experience. Xbox Cloud Gaming is now powered by custom Xbox Series X hardware. We've been upgrading Microsoft data centers around the globe with the fastest, most powerful Xbox hardware to give you faster load times, improved frame rates, and an experience of a new generation of gaming. To ensure the lowest latency, highest quality experience across the broadest set of devices, we will be streaming at 1080p and up to 60 frames per second. Going forward, we'll continue to innovate and add more features to enhance your cloud gaming experience. Cloud gaming provides seamless play across your devices. When you're streaming games on a PC or mobile device, your game is playing from Xbox hardware in a Microsoft data center. This means you can jump into a game, connect with your friends, and play through the Xbox network just as you've always done. That's right, your game saves are just the same wherever and whenever you play, so you can pick right back up where you left off. As we bring more devices, we're also evolving how you can play your games. Today, about 1 in 6 players who play from the cloud are exclusively using custom touch controls that are enabled for more than 50 games. One I personally love is Minecraft Dungeons. Of course, you can also play games from cloud using a compatible Xbox wireless controller, or one of the many supported controllers and mobile gaming accessories include the all-new Backbone 1 for iOS. Today marks a key milestone in our journey to bring the Xbox experience to all gamers and we can't wait for you to begin playing. I remember about three years ago the first time I picked up a phone and played a cloud game using nothing but touch controls. It's a moment I'll never forget where the beauty of the graphics mixed with the creativity of technology to create something truly magical. So from Team Xbox to you, we hope you experience more joy and connection through gaming anywhere and everywhere. This was a big one this week. Now pretty much the entire globe has access to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate via the cloud. I gotta say I was impressed. I've messed with xCloud here and there over the past year on my Android device, and I gotta say now that the Series X hardware is in the cloud, it definitely booted up a lot faster. I gave xbox.com slash play on my PC a try, and I was impressed by how much faster everything loaded and how much better it looked. Cloud gaming continues to come a long way, and I can't wait for more people to get their hands on Xbox gaming in the years to come. Number two, report Xbox is close to a deal for the next Hideo Kojima game. Samuel Tolbert at Windows Central writes, Earlier this year, a report indicated that Microsoft was exploring publishing the next game from Hideo Kojima, head of Kojima Productions. Now it seems like talks are progressing well, and Kojima's new game is extremely likely to be with Xbox. According to Venture Beat reporter Jeff Grubb, Kojima and Microsoft have signed a letter of intent indicating both want to work together, 
while lawyers will continue to fine-tune other specifics of the agreement. Grubb explains that Microsoft has begun preparing for what Kojima will need for his next game, including hiring Kim Swift, a veteran developer who has worked on games like Portal and Left 4 Dead, to work on a cloud-native titles as part of Xbox Game Studios Publishing. As the game will be published by Microsoft, it would almost certainly be exclusive to Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and PC. This is very exciting news, Hideo Kojima could be a huge get from Microsoft and another slap in the face to Sony. I for one have yet to play any of the Metal Gear games, a huge gap in my gaming history, but I did play Death Stranding. And while I think I love the game, I just appreciated how much of a unique gaming experience it was and I can't wait to see what he could do with Xbox. Number 3, Gears of War developer will show off an Unreal Engine 5 demo at GDC. Patrick Dane at GamesRadar writes, Gears of War developer The Coalition is showing off a new demo created in Unreal Engine 5 at GDC. The GDC panel, which is set to run for an hour, is going to be presented on July 20th at 1.20 Pacific Time. The demo is called Alpha Point and will showcase how The Coalition has fared working with the Unreal Engine 5 technology, what the studio learned about it in development environment, and the technology it's taking advantage of. You won't be able to access the panel unless you have a pass for the show, though. It's important to know that this will not be a showcase of anything The Coalition is actively working on, at least in terms of a brand new game, this is purely a tech demo being made to showcase for what the studio can achieve with the engine. So don't expect anything Gears of War or new IP related from the developer. However, it will be useful for developers to see exactly what can be done with a powerful new technology and a capacity outside of Epic Games. We've already seen Unreal Engine 5 used in a showcase from the Fortnite developer last year, but this will demonstrate what could be done in other hands. That means even if you aren't a developer, while there will be a lot of technical jargon, you will be able to get a sense of what truly next-gen games look like running in Unreal Engine 5. A session description confirms the demo will be running entirely on the Series X, meaning that will literally show off what is possible on the console. While fans won't get a look at the new Gears of War here, the demo should at least give players some insight on what's coming. The Coalition has moved over to Unreal Engine 5 for future games. All in all, it should be fascinating glimpse whether you are a developer interested in working with the engine, or just a game enthusiast looking for a glimpse at the future of games. Seeing that Unreal Engine 5 tech demo last year was cool and all, but I can't wait to see what the Coalition can do with Unreal Engine 5 and how it could look running on a Series X. The Gears 5 DLC Hive Busters might be the greatest looking game on the Series X, combative with Forza Horizon, so I can't wait to see what the Coalition could do with the new engine. Number 4, Doom Eternal Team Cancels Plan Mode Promises a Different One. Taylor Lyles at IGN writes, Its Software has announced that it will not move forward with the multiplayer invasion mode for Doom Eternal. Instead, the developer has announced that it is working on a new single-player horde mode for the critically acclaimed first-person shooter. In a statement shared on the official Id Software Twitter account, executive producer Marty Stratton cited several contributing factors for the team canceling invasion mode, including how development of the mode was slowed down due to the team working remotely due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Stratton also notes that additional factors included how previously released updates for Doom Eternal had been met with positive reception from players. Doom Eternal's Invasion mode was originally announced at QuakeCon 2018, with the mode stated to launch as a post-launch free update. The mode would have allowed players to play as demons and invaders on other players' campaigns, similar to how Soulsborne titles like the 2020 remake of Demon Souls which allows you the opportunity to invade another player's world. Alongside the cancellation of Invasion mode and a new single-player Horde mode, Stratton also confirmed in the post that Doom Eternal would receive a free fresh of the multiplayer battle mode that will include a more competitive, rank-based structure, alongside a new map and various tweaks to gameplay and balance. Id Software is expected to share more details of the new horde mode and battle mode refreshes at this year's QuakeCon. I imagine there's a couple people out there disappointed by this news, but I'm willing to bet the money that everyone wants to see Id Software and Doom Eternal focus on more single-player content, so it's cool to imagine what they could do with a horde mode, Somehow, I've yet to beat Doom 2016 or even play Doom Returnal. I know I'd love the games, but it's just sitting on the ever-expanding backlog. Number 5. Report Dead Space Reboot is actually a remake. Ethan Gotch at Kotaku writes, Star Wars Squadron's developer EA Motive is working on a reboot of the hit sci-fi survival horror series Dead Space according to a new report by GamesBeat. Instead of making Dead Space 4, Electronic Arts is planning a reboot of the series with a full-fledged remake, GamesBeat writes. The latest report corroborates two earlier ones by Eurogamer and Gamatsu, claiming some sort of Dead Space revival was in the works of the publisher, and that Star Wars Battlefront II co-production studio EA Motive would be leading it. When Squadrons released last year, the studio made it clear it would not be updating the online multiplayer game in perpetuity under a live service model, it would instead be moving on to other projects that weren't Star Wars related. As we touched on the rumor last week, this is cool to see that it's actually going to be a full-fledged remake. 
This does now halt me, as I'm definitely not going to go back and play the old games, because I'd love to see how it could look all shiny and new on my new console. I liked what EA Motive did with Star Wars Squadrons. It was awesome in VR, so let's give him a chance on a beloved franchise. And number six, NetherRealm starts work on new game and DLC support from Mortal Kombat 11. Matt Kim at IGN writes, NetherRealm took to Twitter this morning to announce that it has started work on its next project. As a result, there will be no further DLC for Mortal Kombat 11. In a tweet, the Chicago-based studio has announced that it is now focusing on the next project. What is the next project? NetherRealm hasn't announced it, but the studio is primarily known for either Mortal Kombat or the Injustice series, a fighting game based on the darker version of the DC Comics universe. Unfortunately, this means that DLC support for Mortal Kombat 11, NetherRealm's 2019 fighting game, and the most recent mainline Mortal Kombat game has ended. Mortal Kombat 11 enjoyed robust DLC support, post-launch receiving new characters like Shang Tsung, as well as a library of guest characters that include the T-800 from Terminator, the Joker, Robocop, Spawn, and John Rambo. I'm not a fighting game fan myself, but I know there's millions out there. I do bring this up too, as NetherRealm would be a primary candidate for Microsoft to acquire if these studios are for sale from Warner Bros. Microsoft is severely lacking in the fighting games and would be a great addition to Game Pass. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and this one is a little bit of an unfun one, but it's about how a Microsoft employee stole 10 million in Xbox gift cards. Credit to Robert Carnival at Windows Central. Vladimir Kvashk likely isn't a name you've heard before. Had his scheme gone according to plan, it would have stayed that way. But now he's at the center of a massive story that breaks down how he sold 10.1 million worth of Xbox gift cards directly from Microsoft. As reported by Bloomberg, Kvashk may have faced deportation back to his home country of Ukraine after serving his prison sentence, which ends in 2027. He will also have to pay back $8.3 million. But how did he get saddled with such heavy punishment? The answer lies in the crime. The man got a job at Microsoft as a junior engineer in order to test the company's infrastructure and use that access to elaborately offload millions of dollars of gift cards to himself. It all started when he discovered a bug in Microsoft e-commerce in ARDS when he received legitimate gift cards via fake credit card purchases. Microsoft systems would prevent fake purchases from sending real physical goods, which was an example of operations working as intended. But they would dispense real digital goods such as 5x5 Xbox gift cards. Once Kavash realized what he was up to, he took his fortunes to the next level and crafted a program that let him use math withdrawal of the gift cards. Sneaky, sneaky man, and this is why we've probably for years seen these Xbox gift cards on sale through various weird websites. Finally got what was coming to him and somehow stole a whopping 10.1 million. My gosh. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, or with the source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, give it a nice review, share it with your friends, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I've continued my journey through Mass Effect 2, and as I said, I messed around on the Xbox Cloud Gaming on my PC. My name is Brandon Rose. You can follow me on Xbox at Broza93. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.